Welcome to FACT's webinar called Create a Farm Website That Sells. Our presenter today is Charlotte Smith with Three Cow Marketing. This webinar is hosted by Food Animal Concerns Trust. I am Larissa McKenna, FACT's Humane Farming Program Director, and I'll be moderating today's session. So before we dive into the presentation itself, I do have just a few quick introductions. Uh, Food Animal Concerns Trust or FACT. We are a national nonprofit organization that's headquartered in Illinois. We promote the safe and humane production of meat, milk, and eggs. I direct FACT's Humane Farming Program, which provides a number of opportunities for livestock and poultry farmers. And this webinar is part of our Humane Farming webinar series. I encourage you to visit our website to learn more about all of our farmer services, including our upcoming webinars and our farmer grant program. So this time, I'm very pleased to introduce our esteemed presenter, Charlotte Smith. Charlotte is a regular on the conference circuit, so you may have seen her at the National Farmers Union Conf Conference, the Beginning Farmers Institute, or the Grassworks Conference, among others. Charlotte is also a farmer herself and has used her marketing savvy to transform her farm from a struggling business into a profitable, sustainable business. We are incredibly lucky to have her with us tonight to share her experience, insight, and expertise about website marketing. And so without further ado, I'm going to turn the floor over to Charlotte so that she may begin her presentation. Charlotte, please take it away. Thank you, Larissa, and everyone else. Thank you for being here. I know a lot of you, it's like dinner time. So it's still afternoon here. I'm in St. Paul, Oregon, and it's just a gorgeous fall day. So thanks for having me. And I love talking about websites. I also want to mention if I'm giving three presentations here three weeks in a row, when you get a chance, know that all three of my presentations kind of fit together like puzzle pieces. So this one will make so much sense after those of you who watched last week's, and I know that's on your website too. So just know that the marketing help you need, it, there's such a big picture gained by watching all of them. So after the foundation of last week, we're going to move on to creating a farm website that sells. And just a little about me, I do have a farm here in St. Paul, Oregon. And when I started my farm 10 years ago, I just started marketing. I, I knew a lot about it because I'd had two other businesses that I grew and then sold before I started the farm. And what I realized is other farmers in the area did not really have any marketing skills because, well, they just weren't trained in that, whereas I had been. And they started asking me how I was able to sell my products at the prices I did when they couldn't sell half of what they produced. So I gradually, over the years, started bringing people into my home about eight years ago. And then about five years ago, I turned it all, I started teaching online and traveling and love what I do. I love helping farmers build profitable farms. So I'm at Three Cow Marketing now, and I also have a podcast, The Profitable Mindset. It's wherever you listen to podcasts. And I just teach everything you can imagine, all things building a profitable farm. So websites i would love to know um i can see the messages i know all of you can't but do you guys have a website or i i just like to have an idea of how many of you already have a website and something that um larissa alluded to in the marketing for this uh webinar today was she said and i'd love for you to answer this this question too but does your website, does it act like an ATM machine? Is it spitting out cash at you? Does it drive enough sales to make your farm profitable? So after you have, tell me if you have a website, I would love to know, does, does it drive enough sales for you? Is it spitting out money at you? Okay, so I'm getting some, yes, a lot of you, most of you have websites and most of you say it's not making you money yet. So, and then my last question, do you have website shame? <laughs> That's one that I hear from a lot of people. When they know I teach marketing and I ask about their website, they'll be afraid to give me their website URL because they have mar a website shame. So I see a lot of that in there too. So I'm going to help you guys, okay? I have so many ideas here that you can implement some of them right away. So let's get you over your shame. <laughs> let's get you a website, those of you who don't have one yet, and let's make it profitable. So going to give you all sorts of ideas on that. 
So it's important to know the, okay, one person said she is a website developer and never gets around to finishing her farm website, just like the cobblers, kids never have any shoes. So I totally get that. So what do people do today when they want an answer or need to solve a problem? All right. What, where do people go? They wake up in the morning. They need to solve a problem. What do we all do? We Google it, right? Oh, good. First person answered <laughs> exactly that. We Google it. Therefore, it's important to know that if you do not have a website, you are missing out on a ton of potential customers. That is where people go for help today. You know, when they get out and get their day started, they might start asking other people, but usually we Google it or we go on Facebook or social media and we say, hey, I need someone to repair the floor in my house. Do you guys have any names of contractors? And we get all sorts of names. Everybody's going online to get questions answered to solve their problems. So therefore, that is the big reason you need a website today. In today's world, you've got to have an online presence. So, and it looks like most of you do, but a, a percentage of you still don't. So let's get you there. There are two options with a website, hire it done, hire a designer or do it yourself. Those are basically the two options. Now I want to tell you today, it is pretty easy to DIY a pretty and profitable website. I even have a free tech training that you'll have access to that walks you through creating your own website on Squarespace. I teach you how to do it for free. Of course, you have to pay for Squarespace platform, but it's free and easy to learn how to build a website today. Compare this to when I started my farm. I built my first website in 2011, and I am not a tech person, and it was so much harder back then. It was much more cumbersome. My first website was so ugly, but I knew how to make it relate to people. So it still worked. By the time I could afford to hire someone, I hired someone in 2015 to create a beautiful website beyond my skill set. We were already profitable. So you can do the same. You with no technology. And in my courses I work with, I have people that are older, like me, 50s, 60s, and even people in their 70s creating their first website once they get over the, the, the worry that they can't do it and they have fun with it. So I want to tell you it's easy to create a pretty website today, so much easier than years ago. So again, you have no reason not to have a website in today's world. All right. So um, our free training, my website is 3calmarketing.com. If you go to the tab that says free training, there's a tech tutorial how to create the free website in Squarespace. And this is a good place to answer the question. I got some questions ahead of time from a lot of you. And a lot of you were asking what platform to create your website on, what was the best platform. And what I want to say is there is a misconception among most business owners, not just farmers, but business owners, that there is the best platform for you. And there are some that are better than others, but for the most part, it's not the platform that makes you profitable, it's how you write your website. And I will talk to you a lot about that as time goes on here. But that's why I teach our free training in Squarespace, because it's more important that you get a pretty website up there that is doing its job connecting with people rather than wait and worry about having the right website platform and trying all these ones. So a lot of you gave me a lot of names, like which do I use? Wix or barn to door or WordPress or all those things. If you're brand new, the easiest thing for you is to start one on Squarespace and then you can move up after that. Now, there are some other more focused platforms, like if you are selling a lot of meat at home deliveries or drop points, by far the best website platform for you is going to be Graze Cart. That's G-R-A-Z-E Cart, C-A-R-T. And that is uh, the farmers, the guys over at Seven Sons. They created that because they needed it for their farm. And so they've created a great platform for if you're doing deliveries and drop sites. That website is the best bet for that. But if you're not that advanced yet, just to get you a website, by all means, start with Squarespace. You're going to be very happy with that.
All right, so the one thing that, again, this could be a 180 degree shift for most of you. <laughs> again, many business owners, not just farmers, think that your website's about you and your products. It is about your customers. And when you start to embrace this belief that your website is about your customers, and it's about making them feel like they've landed in a place where they really feel like you get them, then it's going to work. It's going to connect them. It's going to get you on your email their email list like we talked about last week, if it's about them. All right. So the important thing today, and we touched on this last week too, because it's so consistent in all marketing, is why do people buy from a small business when they can buy it on Amazon? And most people think that if they buy organic meat from Whole Foods on Amazon, it's going to be similar to what they can get from a farm. So we know the difference, but our customers don't. So the thing that makes them want to go out of their way to find you and put up with that little bit of inconvenience, and someone says they just see a black screen. It's, so if it's just this one, um, I think it's the colors on there. So I'm going to shift ahead to this one, <laughs> but uh, I think it's the colors I used in that slide. But the thing that will get people buying from you instead of paying less money and getting it way more conveniently from Amazon or other home delivery meal services is this, that you offer a connection, you offer an experience to them, and you offer a relationship with them. And this must be communicated through your website. And I will teach you how to do that. So if your website does not do these things, but it's just talking about your farming practices and you know what you have for sale, it just looks like anybody else's website. It doesn't connect with them. It doesn't draw them in. They don't feel like there's any anyone there trying to build a relationship with them and they go away. They click, you've got them for three, four seconds and they click away. So that's what's going to keep people going out of their way to buy from you and probably even paying a little more money. All right. So that's what we're here as farmers, as small businesses. We've got to learn how to build relationship and then do that on our websites as well or communicate that. Okay. So today I would love, and you don't have to answer this in there, but I just want you to think about this. What does your online strategy look like now? I have a, an idea here. Um, this is an example of what is very common among most farmers, their online strategy. They will be here on Facebook and they'll may or may not have an Instagram account. We in Oregon, we have something called Eat Wild. And I don't know how far across the United States that goes, if it's on the East Coast too, but that's one of the, there are a lot of online platforms where you can, different farmers can post. There's email, of course, and then there's Craigslist. So this is what most people's online strategy looks like. It's a big group there. Yes, Missy said the same thing. Email list, Instagram, Facebook, my own site. Okay, so this is what most people's looks like. But this is a marketing foundation. This is a clear strategy includes this, this computer screen in the middle is representative of your website. All those things around it feed into it, including that new app you just posted in the comments, any apps you're on, any other websites you're on where you list your products, the farmer's market, all of those feed into your website. So your website is your home. It's, it's part of your brand. These other things in this picture are marketing channels. Your website is part of your foundation. So just remember that. It is your website is your home base. That's what you want to have first. If you're spending a lot of time on Instagram and you don't have a website yet, stop spending time there and get your website up first because your marketing won't work without your website being in place. So your home base is your website. Everything else is built on the foundation of a strong website that sells. This may show up as a black screen again. Sorry, you guys, I'll change my colors for next time. But if your website could do one thing, what would it be? I sort of alluded to that. If it could do one thing, it would be to connect with people and build a relationship with them. But most people, when I first meet them, 
they think their website is supposed to be a billboard, like this billboard here that says buy my products. You know, it's supposed to be a billboard of what they have for sale. So this is, again, I'm asking you to do a 180 degree shift here because it's not actually going to be that. We're going to go back to those um, things it's actually supposed to do, which is build that relationship and connect with people and uh, give them an experience. So when sometimes I go to farmers' websites and I don't even know who the farmer is. There's not one picture of them on there. There's no name or anything. And the reason is a lot of farmers think they're more professional and they look more businesslike if they keep their family out of it. But this is your, this is gold for you guys. This is your, um, you know, this is what makes you, you, this is your brand. So if I land on your website and I can't tell who, what your farm is and who's there and who's the farmer and who's writing the website and who's talking to me, you are missing out on a huge connection. So make sure, and some farmers will tell me that they just don't want to, they want privacy. They don't want their name out there. Well, from a marketing standpoint, if you do that, you will struggle. It will take you many, many times longer to build a connection with people than if you work yourself into your website. Let me tell you one other thing on that. I have people who say, oh, I just don't like the way I look on camera. I don't feel like I've kept myself up. I had a woman tell me that. She's like, I can't put myself on my website. I don't feel like I've kept myself up. And I told her what happens, because I hear this from people all the time, when you show up looking exactly the beautiful you that you are, you give your customers permission to be themselves too. You give them permission to show up just as they are and not feel like they have to be perfect. I see this all the time. So when you show up as your family, just the way you are on your website, you will connect with people way faster. So I just want to encourage those of you who are trying to maintain your privacy Never, I've never had an issue with, or I've never had privacy being an issue. And you will connect a lot deeper and faster when you do work yourself into those pictures on your website. So just in case this is another black screen for you guys, sorry about that. It says how to create a five page website that sells. So here are the five pages and I'm going to give you just like last week, I'll give you a number to text and you can get the five pages you can get the template for your website, but these are the essential five pages, a home page, an about page, a blog, a products page, and a contact page. This is where you want to start. Too many farmers that I consult with have way too many pages on their website. So if you go to your website and you see a whole bunch of tabs at the top, you want to, that should be one of your first tasks is to really pare those down because you're, you're overwhelming people when you do that. You're giving them too many choices and they're going to click away to find a website that is simpler and just solves their problem right away. Like maybe they need to figure out how to get a healthy dinner on the table fast and they show up on your website and you've got 20 tabs with all different options on each tab. You're not, you're confusing them more. So they're going to click away. So start out with just these basic pages and there's a good chance that you will never need any more than this. So simplify your websites. Most farmers' websites are too busy and got too much going on and too confusing. So I'll bring this up at the end again, but I've got a whole checklist that can be emailed to you on website do's and don'ts, all the tips I'm going to talk about. It's going to have some fill in the blank templates for you. So I'll bring this up at the end again, but it will help you walk through even if you already have a website, go through those templates because they're going to help you rewrite your pages in a way that connects with people. All right. And then the first one on there is your home page. This is often the first impression, unless you've sent out a link to your blog or something, they often land on the home page first. So the first thing I want to see on your home page is I want you to make it clear what you sell. You have under 10 seconds. Some studies show you have three seconds to grab people's attention because over the years, 
our attention spans are getting shorter and shorter. So just think you have a few seconds to grab people's attention. So I want to see the products you sell clearly in the header. I'll show you examples of this coming up and why it's important. So I want you to look at your, when you get off this uh, webinar tonight, look at your website. And if you're a brand new person and you land on your website, can you tell within three seconds what you sell? That is really, really important. Otherwise they're gonna leave. Tip number two, like I said earlier about the whole website, make sure you've focused on the customer. So this is not for you to uh, really talk about your farming practices or your unique heritage breeds or what um, specialty products you have or that you're a 10th generation farmer. It's not about you. It's about the customer. So you will learn. And again, I went deep into this last, uh, last time, last webinar. And remember, they go together like puzzle pieces. You will write about the things your customer is telling you they're interested in. Maybe it's their health, maybe it's their family, maybe it's their workout, maybe it's their religion. Maybe they love when you sprinkle Christian Bible quotes through the, your website. That's not for everyone, but if that's what your customer wants, that's what works. I have seen everything out there as far as farmers' websites go, but what happens is when you find out what your customers want to hear about and you put that on your website, a new person who's met, never met you will feel like you're their best friend and they have to come out and buy from you today. And I know this because of our own experience, but also I worked with a couple hundred students a year in my marketing class and we work, a, we spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time and it's amazing how their website goes from getting a few hits a day to actually bringing customers to their farm or their market booth. And you do this by focusing on the customer. Here's an example. This is one of our students and their farm name is Nature's Pantry Farm. Well, you know, from that name, it's very generic. They could sell anything, right? Nature's Pantry could sell uh, vegetables or even vitamins. Or in this case, she put it right up front what they sell. When you land on her website, you see that Nature's Pantry Farm sells grass-fed beef, pastured pork, raw milk, eggs, uh, chicken, honey, and maple syrup. This is what I mean by when someone lands on your website above the fold, which means what they see in the screen when they first land there, it needs to say what you sell. So right now, if it doesn't say that you sell grass-fed beef or pastured chicken, when I glance at your website in, in three seconds, you want to just put that in there in the header, just like they did here. Okay. And here's another one, three acre farm. Again, it could be vegetables. It could be pastured poultry. It could be anything, but you can obviously see she started working with us and immediately put in her header, seasonal you pick flowers and bouquets, produce and plants. You know immediately what she sells. So just make sure your website is doing the same thing. And you could even change this tomorrow on your websites. That could be the first thing you change. If you do nothing else in this webinar, just make sure that if I land on your homepage, I know immediately what you sell. All right, now the about page, as you've heard me say already, <laughs> a big hint, it's not about you. Once again, it's not a place to tell your life story. People reading your website want to read instead about how you can help them. If they land on your website and there's a whole page telling about, like in my case, I'm fifth generation, family farmer, and my ancestors did this and they came here and my husband and I do this and I go on and on with all these paragraphs talking about me, they're gonna click away because they don't see how you, how you can solve their problem immediately. And we're all on limited time and we all have limited attention spans. So they're gonna click away. So then at the bottom, you wanna instead talk about their struggles. Why are they looking for farm fresh products? Why is it? It's to solve a problem. You find out what those problems are and that's what you want on your about page. The other thing I tell people, farmers that I work with, is you've got to earn the right to talk about yourself by connecting with them first. So when they land on your about page and it says something like, if you're trying to feed your family healthy food and you've struggled to find something that works for you, I can help. All of a sudden you've solved their problem right away. You've shown them that you can help them with their problem and then they're going to read on. So maybe at the bottom of the about page, you have a couple sentences about you, but at first 
It's not about you. It's about connecting with them and showing them you can help them with their problem. Tip number two on this is still the about page is you have a huge advantage over Amazon and all those home delivery services and Walmart and the grocery store is sharing your experiences that will relate to your customers. I see a lot of farmers who think that because they have a degree in agriculture or because they are an MD or a PhD and they decided to start a farm, that is what will bring people to them. That is not your credibility. Your credibility are the things you can share that relate to your customer. So if you say not that, oh, I have a degree in nutrition, that's why I can help you. But instead you say, I'm a busy wife and mother, and I'm able to get dinner on the table five nights a week because of this great thing. I can help you do it too. All of a sudden you are credible to them because you've shown them that you've walked in their shoes. So that is the advantage we have over those huge corporations is you can show them you're a, a real person who has had most likely the same problem they've had. It's usually what starts us on our farm journey. So here's an example of Carrie and Julie. Again, this is their about page and they don't go on about them. They say, have you struggled to find produce that will help you and your family live as healthy as possible? You're tired of not knowing where your food comes from. It goes bad after a few days after you purchased it. We can help. So this is their about page. They are connecting with their customer first only then do they earn the right to tell a little bit at the bottom of the about page about their farm. And I know this is often the, like I said, it's a 180 degree shift to what most farmers think. They think people come to us and they land on our about page and they want to hear our amazing story about our soil, our regenerative farming practices and our sustainable methods and our special breeds. And then they're going to buy from us. But no, it's not that. It's that they land on your website and they immediately hear from you that you can totally help them because you've walked in their shoes. You've been there before. You know, whatever struggle they're having, you can help them with it. That's why they will connect with you. All right, so a sample about page. Here's just a sample. This is to give you an idea, just a quick idea. You don't want to copy this because it won't work for your farm. It has to connect with your customers. But after talking with my customers over the years, this is what I came up with. They land on my about page. It says, you've been trying to change your family's diet, but can't seem to find the time between running kids to soccer practice and finally getting to that week old pile of laundry. That's not just me, right? See how I'm not even talking about farming right there. I'm talking about the things I do that I know my ideal customer, like we talked about last time, is doing. She reads that and she's like, oh my gosh, this woman is just like me. Who is this person? I'm going to go out to their farm because I know she can help me. So I go on to say, you'd love to be able to slow down, eat healthier, and sit down to dinner as a family more often. I hear you, girl. I'm so glad you're here because I'm going to make your life so much easier. Our farm fresh meat boxes, along with our step-by-step -step tutorials, will help you get dinner on the table without all the stress. So in those few lines there, I solved their problem. And you wouldn't believe how many times I get a phone call and someone says, I just landed on your website and you are exactly what I've been looking for. I've been looking for a farm for weeks and I read this page right here and you're my farmer. I already know it. I'll be out there today. And they come out and they order a lot of food and they're very loyal and they tell all their friends. This is what an about page does for you. When you focus it on your customers, that's when your uh, website becomes like that ATM machine, spitting out that money at you. Okay, so again, you can get the whole template, fill in the blank template. I'll have that number up again at the, back, at the end. But it's a fill in the blank template of the about page. It's what I just read to you. The first thing I did and what you'll do, you will describe your customer's problem, which you know because you, uh, we, we talked about uh, talking with your ideal customer and finding out why they buy from you, what your products do for them. You're going to describe that problem first so they know they're in the right place. Then you're going to reassure them, hey, I've struggled with that too. And then you're going to introduce yourself and tell them your credibility, which is not your fancy degrees, but it is because you're a busy mom or 
you were a single man at one point trying to feed one person or whatever it is you decide relates to your ideal customer. And then step four is that call to action. For me, it's come out to our farm store. All right. And then step three on that is content blog. Okay. So I'd love for you guys to tell me in the comments, how many of you have a blog? How many of you have it and update it regularly? If, if you tuned in last time, you heard me say you've got to have fresh content on there once a month minimum. Someone asked a question and the questions I got ahead of time about SEO, about hiring someone. You don't need to hire someone to do SEO. It probably won't even work. It's built into Squarespace. So if you use Squarespace as your website, which is great, easy, pretty, simple, SEO is built in. That is also, that's search engine optimization. It's how you get found online. A blog updated once a month is the best thing you can do for SEO. So let's see, in the comments, most people do not have a blog. A couple people do, but it's not updated. And... Um, in my, uh, someone says blogs have dropped off and not really sure people see them. Okay. I have, so again, another 180 degree shift. Your blog is what will get you seen in Google searches. It's when you update your blog once a month, year round, Google sees you as relevant. All right. So it's really important to have the blog. Nobody lands on your website randomly. You send them there in your email once a month, just like we talked about last time. These two fit together really well. You email them, you link over to your blog, and they read it, okay? So blog is still the number one marketing tool. It's the number one way you will make money on your farm practicing modern methods, okay? It... Again, it's withstood the test of time. It outperforms any social media marketing over and over and over. Like we send out a link to our blog and we'll make five or $10,000 with one email. I could never put up a Facebook or Instagram post that would make that kind of money. They aren't meant to. That's not what those platforms are for. That's what your blog is for. So, uh, and we'll talk more about social media versus blog next week. So um, those of you who have not updated it, know that a thousand words, maybe 800 to 2000 words max are ideal and just getting something up there will help you get found in a Google search. Okay, thank you for that thumbs up. Woohoo, love being able to uh, get those little reinforcement here. Okay, so tip number one is a blog helps you retain your current customers. Those of you, oh gosh, this is a good time to tell you that I my Profitable Mindset podcast next episode, number 14 coming out next week, is all about blogging. So if you want a 30-minute training just on blogging, you will definitely want to um, listen to that because it expands on this right here. It, I will tell you how and why a blog helps you retain your current customers and, you know, but it offers them more ways to use your products. So for instance, I have a hairdresser who would buy uh, ground beef from me once in a while. And she said, you know, I'd really like to more, buy more ground beef, but I only know how to make taco salads and my family is so tired of them. So that's why I only buy like two pounds a month, which is a really small amount for ground beef. And I went, bingo, how silly of me. I listened to my customers and I had a little recipe booklet with five more recipes, five ways to use ground beef. You know, my customers needed more ideas to use ground beef because we as farmers, we think everybody knows how to cook like we do, but they don't. I was shocked when she said she only knows how to make taco salad. She's not uh, alone though. That is most of our customers. Your blog, so then she starts buying 20 pounds of ground beef at a time because I gave her a dozen more ways to use ground beef and all my other customers. That's how it helps you sell more product to your current customers, okay? And the next tip, and I detail this so much more in my um, training next week, a blog helps you reach new customers. So there, it's easy for someone to forward a blog to somebody and um, it, you can answer questions in there. So if, if someone comes across your website and they had heard of ordering a quarter beef, but it was really intimidating to them 
and you have a blog post on how to break down a quarter beef, and then you have other blog posts using recipes that use up each and every cut of the quarter beef, and you have another blog post all about the process of ordering a quarter beef, they read through this and it's a no brainer. They're going to order from you. That's the biggest um, roadblock I hear from people not ordering a quarter beef is it's so confusing. When you have it laid out in a series of a, a five-part blog post series, you will attract so many more customers because of that. Okay, so um, Beth said, I don't have a blog, but a friend recommended I just write a few times a week to get ideas for a blog when I start, yes or no. You know what I do? I keep a Google uh, doc of my ideal customer description like I talked about last week, and I keep a Google spreadsheet of all the ideas my customers tell me when I'm in my farm store. So I have a notebook in my farm store. Whenever anyone asks a question, they, the employee in the farm store writes that question in my notebook. That is what I blog about. So that's a great idea um, on how to know what to write about. It's You will write about what your uh, customers are asking you about. Okay, so again, here is Nature's Pantry Farm, how to uncrystallize raw honey. That's one of our blog posts. The shocking difference between raw milk versus pasteurized, 10 ways to eat clean. These are all blog posts that her customers have asked her about. So um, you want to make sure that you're listening to your customers because that's where your content comes from. And I, I'm sorry, Teresa says she missed the webinar. I keep referring to last week's webinar. And um, Larissa will make sure you guys all know that, yes, it's on the website. So you will have access to it because all my teaching reinforces each other. They kind of fit together. <laughs> all right. And uh, our website, here's a blog. You'll be inspired by this customer's healing story, a quiche recipe, how to easily and quickly peel fresh, farm fresh hard boiled eggs. Again, these are all things that I know my customer will clamor to read. They will, be, they will open that email and click over and read it and forward it to their friends. Now, here's another reason. So I was looking, here, here's another reason for you to have a blog. When someone compares two farms, which I have customers do that all, they'll come here and they'll say, I looked at three or four farms online and we decided to come here. This is, your blog is one of the reasons why. I wanted to sell fermented vegetables in our farm store. So I looked up, I met both these ladies the owners of Oli Kraut, the owner of Firefly. I met them both at different conferences. They were very nice ladies. They, I could have been friends with either of them. I, they, their businesses were about the same size. They're the same location. The flavors were amazing. The packaging was amazing. The people were amazing. I loved them. I, and I wanted to patronize both of them, but of course I couldn't. I just needed to choose one. And what happened is I went to their websites and the first one, Oli Kraut, had a website that even looked a little bit like Firefly. It looked similar, had a beautiful pictures. They sell the same thing, Julie. Yes, they sell the same thing. They both sell fermented vegetables in these little jars. Here's Firefly. Look, you see a picture of her. You see similar little jars. Okay. So if I looked at the website, it's like, oh, they look similar. But then Oli Kraut had a blog and Firefly did not. And the blog gave me all these ideas of different recipes that I could share with my customers and all this information that I could pass on to my customers and get my customers to buy more of the um, ferments, the fermented vegetables. They, Oli Kraut is helping me sell my product because they have a blog. When someone lands on your website and they're wondering about buying from you, the blog will seal the deal. That's what a blog is for. It will seal the deal of who you're going to buy from. All right. So real, if I don't, if I haven't convinced you yet, <laughs> that should do it. Okay. Then uh, number four, the products page, I want you to clearly explain how to buy. Okay, tip number one, if you confuse people, you lose the sale. I land on a lot of farmers' websites and it say we sell grass-fed beef, for instance. And I I play like I, you know, I'm brand new there, which I am, but I come from a customer point of view. And it often takes me two or three or four or five clicks on the website to figure out how to buy. 
your customers and your potential customers will never do that. They'll leave if they can't see how to buy right now. So they need to land on your website and within three seconds, they need to read in the header what you sell and they need to see the tab where they can buy. If it's not that clear, you'll want to change it up because you will lose. Remember, attention spans are getting shorter. They're leaving sooner. <laughs> okay. And then tip number two on your products page, um, present their problem and your solution. Like tired of making taco salad for dinner every night. I can help. Here's my recipe booklet, five uses for ground beef or something like that. So that's going to attract all the people that are just like my hairstylist. So customers do not have time to read pages and pages on your website of your methodology, your farming practices, any of those things, the science, they trust you. They want someone that they can trust that that person's do it. Their farmer is doing the right thing so they can focus on solving their problem. So that's how you app, you will learn to offer your product as a solution to their problem. Here's a sample product description, bone broth, because we sell bone broth in our farm store. I sent out a blog post and it was on our products page. Drink more bone broth was your new year's resolution this year. But after ruining a few batches and filling up your whole house with that smell, you've decided it's just not going to happen this year. Luckily, you can buy our jars of bone broth made from farm fresh bones without having to do any work. The reason I wrote that description and we just sell bone broth like mad is because uh, people were telling me we sold bones and they'd say, well, I know I should be making it, but I just hate how it makes the house smell up for 24 hours. So I put that right into my marketing. That's what I'm teaching you to do. Listen to what your customers say and then put that right on your products page. And all of a sudden you've solved their problem. And again, when you offer the solution to their problem, little side note here, um, they will pay you any, pr they don't question price. You've give, you've solved their problem. So price is not an object. It's not a concern. They won't nickel and dime you because you've solved their problem. So here's one Dickinson farm. Are you adventurous, indecisive? Just want to try us out. Are you noncommittal or is your schedule too crazy? No problem. Just purchase our harvest bag option when you're cooking to impress your new bow or your parents are coming over to inspect your fridge. She again, we, she's one of our clients, customers, or I should say students in our marketing class. These are the things that her customers were telling that they didn't want a CSA where they got a box of predetermined vegetables. They wanted to decide their own. So she did this harvest bag where they could just um, pick a really, you know, make it made it really easy on them. So my whole point here that I'm making over and over again is listen to your customers. They are already telling you what they want to hear from you about. And then the contact page, always have your contact page. Um, and I'm looking at the time. I'm going to speed up here because we're almost done. Tip number one, answer any frequently asked questions and explain how to buy. It's really important to have a contact page. If you get asked certain questions all the time, answer them here. And number two, offer, offer simple forms of contact. If you don't like people calling you, put your you can put your phone number in there and say text only to this number and put it in there, driving directions if necessary. If you are not a huge farm yet, if you're not making tons of sales, I can tell you that just by adding your phone number in there and saying, call me if you have questions, will help your sales. When you get too big and too busy, you can take your phone number out of there. But the first few years, I made a lot of sales just because I had a phone number on there. They would be on my website and they would just call me and I answered the phone and they would come out within an hour and buy. So the sooner they can reach you, the better, which is why if you can do a phone number on there, it's great. I wouldn't worry. I don't get lots of spam. Call well, I have a spam blocker on my phone, so you can even take care of that. So if you're worried about spam, don't. It will help your sales. All right, if this is one of those slides you can't read, it says website design and formatting. So just a few design tips. You want lots of white space. Today's websites are so much prettier than when I created my first one uh, almost 10 years ago. It's a lot easier to make a pretty one today. You don't want it too crowded. Stick to one to three colors, uh, minimal fonts, Go with black and white, have pretty pictures. You got to have pretty pictures in today's world. 
and keep your text very short. Do not have long blocks of text because people's eyes gloss over it. They don't even read it. You also don't want a lot of pop-ups or flashy, flashy messages. Don't have social media links. Remember, they're gonna if they click away to see you on Instagram, they're going to go down the deep, dark hole of Instagram and never come back to your website. So remove any links to outside sources. Take those off your website right now. If, if you're linking to farm organizations because you love them, that is like a big flashing exit sign on your website. So uh, remove any other links on your website. All right. That could be one of the, one of the top three things you could go home and do tomorrow that will really upgrade your chances of turning them into a paying customer. Okay. So you guys, good. I got done in time to have some questions. Let's, uh, if you text this word 3CM website to that number 44222, you're going to get the pricing course that I talked about last week too, how to price your products. You're going to get that template on the five on the, the five website pages, and you're going to get our email marketing course that's free, and you do get on my email list. So if you don't want on the email list, you can grab the freebies and then unsubscribe, but I want to be obviously transparent. You get on our list when you do that, and I think... I model exactly what I teach. So I'm showing you exactly what I teach our students to do, to give people something free in exchange for their email address. We talked a ton about that in the last session too. So um, let me see. I, I, <laughs> I added that one. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you did that one. Oh, how cute. Little sheep. Little yeah, ladies. speaking about, so, you know, yeah, cute yeah, pictures. I'll go back to that. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, yes, the resources for the technical aspects. In that email, Katie, is the tech tutorial that we teach you to build your own website on Squarespace. But what's more important is what goes on your website. So, um, yes, our tech tutorial teaches you how to do that. And then... Other questions, I guess, right, Larissa? We can open it up to other questions. In the absolutely, yep. And Someone I'll, asked, I'll actually, ahead. could you just uh, reiterate the length of a a blog post or what you'd recommend? Yeah, so there are two schools of thought on that. I like to have a variety of short ones and long ones. Here's why: Google prefers two thousand word blog posts. So I like to make sure I have a 2000 word blog post up there fresh about every two months. People like to read shorter ones. So, um, you know, I might do an 800 word blog post and then know that I need 2000 words, but I'll expect my customers will only read the first half of it. But that's what you can plan on for best search engine optimization. Um, Oh, you said, what's the name of my podcast? It's called The Profitable Mindset with Charlotte Smith. And it's everywhere you listen to podcasts. It's also on my website under the podcast tab. So Profitable Mindset. I talk about marketing and also having the right beliefs. Because if you don't believe your website will work, then it won't work. <laughs> your belief comes true. So um, I, I build some mindset coaching in there too. Someone says, how do you feel about links to sub pages under your five major pages? Yes, so definitely, we're talking deep, deeper into design here. At the bottom of your about page, that in that uh, template, that's where you want your call to action. And that is where you want, how is it you make money? Do you make money? Like for instance, I know if someone walks in my farm store, I make money. So the link at the bottom, for someone like that would be a link to your farm store. If you are doing, if you sell one product, you only sell quarter beef online. Your about page would talk to them about solving their problem. And then at the bottom, you're gonna have a link to sell that because you've just built a ton of trust with them in that about page. Now, if your about page is all about your family story and you link, they aren't gonna follow that link and they aren't gonna buy because you didn't connect with them, okay? So quick answer there. And someone says, do you think it's valuable to get farm photos done by a professional or someone at least good with a camera? Absolutely. Today's world, uh, online world is very, they have very high expectations for high quality photos. Again, when I made my first website back in 2011, it was all my own photos. They weren't professional and that was more acceptable then. But for you 
to be competitive in today's world, definitely hire a professional. When I first hired a photographer, it was always, I always had customers who, I always seemed to have one or two customers who are photographers who would trade product for photos. Mm -hmm. So most photographers will ch will pay charge, I don't know, $500 to $1,000 for an hour photo shoot that includes a bunch of photos you can use. But you could also, I have traded a half a pig, a quarter beef, um, cheese class admission for, you know, a couple people. I've traded so many things for photography. So yes, it's very important to um, try to make sure you get good photos. I think that also helps to make sure that the farmer gets in the photos as well. Oh, yeah, that's another <laughs> thing. Um, uh, can I put that screen back up there with the text? Sure. Larissa, mm -hmm. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. So someone's asking, where do you sign up for the uh, text bot? That's right here. If you send it, ugh, there's a little <laughs> delay in the text, so I click the button click twice. If you text to the number 44222, the word 3CM website, you will get all the links to the goodies in there. And uh, like I said, you get on our email list or you can take the goodies and, and not either way. Um, someone asked <laughs> last week, choosing the best platform came up a lot. So I just want to re reiterate Oh, someone says, how do you get that bot for your farm? It's through a program called Lead Pages that I use. You can Google leadpages.com and get a text program. It's it's um it's an investment. I think it's $79 a month to do that. So you can get your customers to text to you and opt into your website. So that's where I get that from. Um, so a lot of the questions people have are what's the right platform? It is more important that your website connects with people and don't worry so much about the platform. I only say that because finding the right website platform will stop people from creating a website for months and months. It's more important that you get a presence out on the internet. So that's why we have the, you know, get one up with, with Squarespace. And then as you get bigger, your needs might change. You know, you might even switch to Shopify if you're doing online sales or graze cart, but truly it's more important to get an, an internet presence. It's really pretty with something like Squarespace to start with. And they all have blog platforms today. Um, someone said, which platform is the easiest? Again, I'd start with Squarespace. Uh, any other questions ask? I'm looking through the list on here and, um, yeah, we have time for a couple more folks want to pick um, Charlotte's brain. Someone asked me about, do you have to invest in a GoPro to facilitate a webinar? You know, most computers have a camera on them or you can buy a fairly inexpensive camera to go on your computer, but most of them have them if it's a newer computer. Uh, my farm is Shampooy Creamery. What's asking that question in there? And again, someone asked, does it pay to hire someone to optimize SEO ranking, search engine optimization? Again, Squarespace does that for you. And having fresh content on your website once a month in the form of a blog uh, will help you with that. And how would this change for a wholesale farm without consumer sales? So that's a really good question. Wholesale accounts are... I see it in the farming world based on relationship just, just as much as customers. If you don't maintain a relationship with them, they will go elsewhere. They'll meet someone at some event or a conference and they'll change their supplier because you did not stay in front of them. So um, there's more details you would change, but that would, uh, that would be a longer answer. But basically relationship building is how people buy in this world, whether it's, um, wholesale or, uh, oh gosh, someone said maybe the number's wrong. Uh, I can, I can talk with you, Larissa, about that. Sure. And, um, someone asked, does having fresh content must be linked to SEO regardless of your platform? Yes, it does. Okay. <laughs> Let me see one more four, four, two, two, two. Mm -hmm. Okay. That number is working, so I'm not sure. And then the last question here, 
We do farmer's market, CSA, and wholesale. Should blog posts address each type of customer? You, If you're doing uh, direct to consumer, you want to focus on them, and then your wholesale might be a separate page, okay? But if you're selling direct to consumer, your website needs to really speak to your um, direct, your consumers, the, the average person that's landing on your website. And Charlie, we, we actually got one last question that came in through the Q&A um, button, but it's similar. Uh, the question is, I have a multifaceted business services as well as products in relation, relation to sheep. How do I do all that in one website? So your products, it sounds like maybe you're selling to consumers and maybe you're selling to farmers. You need to focus on one. This is a, a really important, my first podcast episode the very first one, number one, talks about you've got to choose a signature product. Your brand is who you are and what problem you solve. And the more products you sell, the, the more you dilute your brand. So you'll choose one to focus on on your website. If you've got too many to choose from, they will go away. So you'll choose a signature product that you focus on on your website. And it might be focused mostly on consumers and then have one little tab that says for farmers, if you're selling breeding stock, for instance. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really important that everyone try to choose a signature product. You will uh, sell more product faster and easier if you do that. All right. Well, I'm going to skip through this and I'm going to just say thank you, Charlotte. I, I have a couple of housekeeping items I'd like to share with everyone before we sign off. I know there might be more questions that come up, um, but um, you'll be linked up with, with Charlotte um, in the follow-up email I'll be sending out. Um, as a reminder, there will be a very short survey uh, immediately following this webinar. So we would greatly appreciate it if you take a, a moment to tell us about your experience. And then the recording, the slides will be available soon. The documents will continue to be ar uh, archived on our website. And we're also going to email them to you tomorrow morning. And I'll be sure to email a link to last week's webinar as well. The one about the, the first one about marketing. Um, I do want to do a quick plug for our upcoming webinars. Charlotte's going to be back one more time again with us next week to share social media strategies. And it should be another fantastic session. So I, I really hope that you all will, will join in. And I will be sending registration links to the upcoming webinars in the follow-up email as well. Uh, Charlotte, do you have any parting thoughts before we close this webinar? Oh, just thank you, everyone, for hanging in here. And uh, you guys are so welcome. I love being here. And that's it. I can't wait to see you. Share the love. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a real honor and pleasure to have you, Charlotte. I'm going to look forward to next week and for the third part of our marketing webinar series. And I would also like to thank everyone that's still out there in the audience for your interest and your attention. And hopefully you go and get some dinner if you haven't already. Um, so have a really wonderful evening and goodbye for now. See you soon. Bye. Bye.